Welcome to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Jenna McEwen, and on today's show, I'm at Merkel's Camp, an excellent drive-to location in Northern Ontario. I'm gonna be fishing for Northern Pike and Bass and demonstrating some of the best retrieval techniques and fly patterns to use this time of year. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Northwest Ontario Tourism, GoFishingOntario.com, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy. Today we've driven up to northwestern Ontario on the Trans-Canada Highway to Merkel's Camp near Dryden. Located on Wabagoon Lake, this drive-to location is very popular with both anglers and hunters because of the ease of access and affordability. Comfortable cabins with a beautiful view of the lake are ideal for families, groups of anglers, or in our case, father and daughter. Jenna and I are very excited to come and fish this system. Our guide for the next few days is camp owner Terry Kluke, who has fished this lake and river system for over 30 years and knows it well. The Wabagoon system provides great fishing for trophy sized smallmouth bass, pike, walleye, and even muskie. Even better, the fish stay relatively shallow all season long thanks to the slightly colored water, perfect for fly fishers. For our first afternoon on the water, Terry took Jenna out to do some casting for northern pike in the shallows. So Terry, like you were telling me at breakfast this morning, we're out fishing for pike in this reed bed area, and the pike here can get huge, but you also said that it's possible because it's a multi-fishery that we could catch a muskie. Possibilities are very high because they spawn in the same area, and muskies typically spawn about 10 days after. That's why the season opens a, bit, a little bit later. Mm -hmm. The season actually doesn't open until the third Saturday in June, but when you're fishing in these little areas, that we're only fishing in two and three feet of water, and they're looking for warm water, and they'll just lay there after spawning. And if you happen to catch a 45 or 50 inch muskie by accident, that's a good mistake. But remember to keep your line in the water right to the boat because they'll follow it right into the boat and that's where they'll hit. Whoa! It's definitely bigger than the ones we were catching earlier. Is it? Yeah. Netable? I hope so. Well, so far, we it's got you got, it's me beat. Bigger. you got me beat. You got me beat. There we go. Thanks. Well, we're catching fish. Small fish, but we're catching fish, and we know the bigger ones are going to be out there. And weather's beautiful. It's a great evening. So Terry, you've brought us to a couple different places. Could you tell me more about the structure that we're looking for for fishing the pike on this lake? A lot of times people think you can only catch northerns and stuff in the weed beds. But there's a lot of areas like these here, you get the rocky points and stuff. And what they don't realize is there's little package, patches of uh, grass and weeds in amongst those little valleys in the rocks. And the water's warmer, especially this time of year, you want that extra one or two degrees from the sun warming the rocks up. And the big northerns will lay right beside it. And we're coming into an area now, there's a whole bunch of rocks right in there, Jenna. You want to cast right up beside those rocks. Those big pike will lay right beside that rock. 
and just let it sink down and get a little twitch, then we're going to move out here and there's a reef out here in the middle. But yeah, you don't always have to fish pure weed bed bays. And a lot of the biggest pike will actually be out in that six, eight, ten feet of water and, and then come up to feed. That's a big musky. <coughs> That's a big musky. <coughs> oh. Oh, did he hammer that? Oh, it's a musky. A We're looking one. for pike. And we've got a musky here. Oh, that's a good sized fish, too. I get him on the reel. And I got a. Oh, no! Oh, no! No! <laughs> there it is again! It hit it again! Oh, oh, oh. It hit it again. No way. It hit it twice. Whoa. Tell them what it is. I think it's a little pike. That's a nice slow roll and take of the fish. That's not a bad size. He's not a bad size. And that's what we're looking for this morning. Pike. Oh, ready for him, Tara? Yep. There we go. Oh. Very nice fish. Okay. Take those, those are a lot of fun. Up next, it's all about big smallmouth on a fly. Jenna and Terry went out to do some casting for smallmouth. Sean, I think it's a bass. It is a bass, yep. Oh, it's a nice bass. Oh! oh it was a nice bass. It's a nice one. No! <laughs> That's what happens when you don't set the hook. You get too excited. All right, I'm gonna see if I can catch him again. Darn it. I have a fish. Oh, it's a good size. Thanks, Terry. Wow, okay, decent fish. That's awesome. Yes, that's a good size smallie. And he was just barely even hooked. A smallie. And away he goes again. Later in the day, Jenna decided to stay in and Terry and I went out for the last few hours of light to cast poppers. So basically what's happening here is that we're picking apart wherever the shadows are. It's steep here going out to 10, 12 feet, and the fish are tucked in tight. They're trying to keep out of the sun, keep away from the predators, but they're looking for opportunities, whether it's minnows swimming by or things falling out of the tree, and that could be a beetle, it could be a dragonfly, it could be from a mayfly hatch the night before, or even a frog, which would be the fantasy for these guys. But you've gotta make your casts really tight and right in against the banks. It's very much like river fishing for smallmouth. You've got to put it in there, and you're going to snag up, but you're going to have that big head come up and go and grab that fly, and it's a lot of fun. It's very visual. And what's interesting about this, it's very much like streamer fishing. When you smack a streamer down behind a rock or in front of a rock in a river, and you give it a couple tugs, usually within three or four pops, if there's a fish there, he's going to take it. Oh. Whoa, baby. So as I was just saying, I made a bad cast. And I was trying to reinforce the fact that when you make a bad cast, always follow through and complete the retrieve. Oh, that's good fish. Follow through and, and uh, finish the retrieve. And uh, I'm sure glad I did. I gave this one or two little pops, and look at this, another sweet fish. This is another 17, I'd say. 16, 17. And Scott just got an 18, and he said he lost a bigger one. Wow. 
big, nice thick, fish. heavy fish. That's a nice fat uh, fish, that one. <laughs> yeah, he's very heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now I'm using an eight weight saltwater series rod and he's just making this thing work. Look at that. That's How could you not like that's this? That's a big, thick fish. Wow. Oh, it's bending the net. That is a, that's actually a lot better than I thought. <laughs> that's a big Holy fish. Crap. We gotta weigh that one too. Oh, wow. Oh, that's four pounds anyways. <sighs> Pop it right there in the tongue. I'll just get in there, take that out. Oh, easy peasy. Is that ever sweet? Out there? 18, 18 yeah, solid think. inches, maybe 18 and a half. Oh, Scott's how's that for a, gratitude? Scott's, Scott's got another one on too. <laughs> and Scott's just around the corner. He's got another fish. And we've got, what, another hour and a half, two hours of light here? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He was right in tight, that fish. Oh, there we go. Whoa, that was incredible. Oh, 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 oh. oh, how can anybody not like popper fishing <laughs> for smallmouth? Oh, look at that. And that was so dramatic. You wouldn't want to use anything less than a six weight for sure. <laughs> no, no. These fish are so strong. Okay, oh, he's not ready. He's not ready. Wow. And right where you expect him to be, tucked right in there. We fished a lot of structure and we're having to do a little prospecting to find them, but they're here. It's and they're the, tight, tight to shore. Very tight, yeah. Oh, there we go, into the net. All right, another small 17 inch fish, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. 17, 17 and a quarter, and what will this one be? Oh, it's right in the top. Just get it out of here. See, the nice thing is I'm ready for the big bass, eh, with this measuring stick. Yeah. <laughs> that one uh, is 16. 16 and a quarter. 16 and a quarter, wow. Yep. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? One of the smaller ones, but yep. it's still a lot of fun. Nice and thick, and it's starting to fill out. And it's still early, like they're just spawned out. You start catching those fish in July and August, you're gonna get another half a pound on them. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's go release this guy over here in the sun. Springtime, it's crystal clear, but it's got a lot of clay, and it'll get uh, clouded up a little bit here and there. So the fish stay shallow all summer. Like people always say, they want to come in May or June because the fish are shallow. We fish basically six feet on average or less all summer long for walleyes, northerns, muskies, smallmouth, perch, everything right in that area. And <clears throat> you can fish a calm day, windy day, you know, cloudy day, sunny day. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference the fishing stays pretty steady all summer long. Later in the day, the weather really closed in and Jenna decided to stay back at our comfortable cabin where it was nice and warm and dry. Terry and I thought the conditions were perfect for catching pike. And were we ever correct on that assumption? Whoa. He's right where you said, Terry. And that's in the lily pads. This is what I really like about here is that you can, as a fly fisher, the fish are, oh, that's a nice fish. The fly, the pike and the muskie are all, oh, all right in shallow. This is three feet of water. And I just lost a muskie over here in the point. The camera wasn't even here. And this guy, I casted these lily pads here. Oh, there he goes. And he uh, just slammed the fly. He came right to the boat. I gave it a twitch. I thought I saw something underneath the fly. And boom. OK, I'm going to bring him to you. He really took it. Oh, yes. Nice jump. 
Oh boy, I love catching pika. Yeah. I'm using a 10 weight rod here, 30 pound wire leader. You got him, you got him. All right, oh, he's, oh, he's coming out. Oh, you got him, all right, good job, Terry. Whew. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful pike, nice, and look how fat and heavy he is. Neat just hammered that fly, he just hoovered it, right at the boat. What are we talking about here? 30, 36 and a half. 36 and a half in like two and a half, three feet of water. That's pretty exciting. Okay, let's get this hook out and let's get him going. Whoa, look at that, all muscle. The rods you will need here are fast action six and nine weights. The fast action will help you punch out wind resistant topwater flies at a distance. For most of the time, we used floating lines as the fish are relatively shallow. Sometimes we would put on an intermediate fly line to get our flies a little bit deeper, but that was mostly for the bass in clear water areas. So we're casting into this boulder field, right? trying to get the fly between the cracks in the boulder because that's where the bass are going to be laying. We're pre-spawn right now, so the males are getting their nests ready. Nothing's happened yet, but that's where the bass are going to be, just right in the cracks between the boulders. Fish on. There we go, see, just, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Thanks. This one's probably about half an inch longer than the last one. Working our way up. Yep. Yeah. But once again, a nice little hook in the corner of the mouth there. Doesn't hurt the fish at all. Let them go back. Cool. Gorgeous house. It's crazy how well they blend in with the watercolor here. I didn't even, you feel the tug and then you see the silver flash of their stomach, but before that, it can be hard to actually tell whether you have a follow in the, with the watercolor. Fish on. There we go, good girl. <laughs> oh. The bass really are on today. This is awesome. And they're, they're fighting really well too. Oh, this one I think may be a little bigger than the last one. There we go. Thank you. So nice thing about those barbless hooks, the fly just pops right out. Pops right out. As long yeah, as you just... keep the tension on, you're okay. Yeah. If you let it, leave it slack, well, fish go back. Great, thanks Terry. You're welcome. This Have... is an awesome spot for bass. Fish on. Oh. Yes. Oh, that's a good sized bike. There we go. All right, bring the head in. Thanks, Terry. Oh. There we go. And he was like, just just where you said, right up against the reeds. Just slow little twitches and... You can yes. see how, how close we are, how shallow we are. It's, yeah. It's turned up all the mud just fighting it and doing things. <laughs> it's right down there in the, the shallows. They aren't even hooked. The hook just popped right out. 
Wow. But just a little fly like that catches a nice fish like this. Eh? When you hold it, hold them in the gill, mm -hmm. just slide your fingers right in, like tight to the gill in here so you okay. don't bother, or not the gill, but the gill plate, so you don't bother the gills. But once again, see how the, the pike have no teeth hardly at all? Right. Because they... They all molt in the springtime. Yeah. That's so cool. My theory for that is, when they're in the spawning areas, they don't eat all the mid-sized fish, like the 10, mm -hmm. 12 inch fish that we need to survive to go on to, to raise more fish. There we go. Just hold my tail. There it goes. Gone. That was awesome. I still can't get over how beautiful the pike are here. Just the colors are so vibrant and it's so cool. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. We highly recommend that you come to Merkel's Camp for your next vacation. For more information on today's show and others in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Northwest Ontario Tourism, GoFishingOntario.com, Orvis Sporting Traditions. Rio Products. Superfly. Fly fishing made easy.